we did uh, this um, illustrative example um, by using the change of numerator method to compute the first term in the Black-Scholes formula. Uh, but what we really need it for is to compute, uh, in some models at least, the price of a bond option, call option on a bond. And that's this uh, next slide. Uh, it's called the black scholes merton formula for uh, bond options. And um, I'm going to look at two assets here. One I'm going to use as the numerator, and the other asset I'm going to write the call option on. Uh, they will both be bonds eventually, but right now let's start with any asset S on which I'm going to write uh, the call option. Uh, S is going to be the uh, underlying of my call option. And I'm going to uh, use as the numerator, so the, the option has maturity capital T. Okay. Uh, I did not write that uh, in, the, in the slide, uh, but maturity of the option, so option maturity is capital T. A and I'm going to look at the bond price, zero coupon bond, which has the same maturity as the maturity of the option. I'm going to use that bond as my numerator. Okay, I actually did this already when I was talking about market models for uh, pricing couplets, but at that time we didn't really know the theory of change of numerator. And I need one condition. In order to be able to get black scholes type formula, you need some kind of condition uh, where it, there is going to be some um, log normality. So the condition is that if you look at this ratio, which I call f, uh, which is the ratio of my uh, asset, underlying asset, the on which I'm writing the option, call option, a and I discount it by the numerator, by the bond price, which has the same maturity uh, as the option, I require that that has deterministic volatility. Okay? And I'm going to call that volatility sigma f, right, this one here. Right, so I, I require that this ratio, the underlying of the option over the uh, my numerator, which is the bond with the maturity of the option, that that has deterministic volatility. In that case, I do have a Black-Scholes type formula. It looks similar to Black-Scholes. It's uh, this is a time zero. It's the underlying asset times n of d1, where, where I'll tell you what the d1 is minus, it's kind of this kind of strike price, it, it would be like a bond, k bonds, uh, or, or uh, you know, pay getting k dollars at, at the maturity, but then discounted by the bond price, okay? Uh, instead, of, instead of writing discounting here, the interest rate may be random here. So I cannot write, I cannot write e to the minus r uh, t. Instead, I, I replace this by p of zero t. If R was the if the interest rate was deterministic, then it would be the same thing. Uh, but since it's not, the way I discount, I multiply by the bond price, and then n of d two. Now d one and d two look kind of similar to uh, the Black Scholes case, uh, except again I never see R because R is random. Instead of everywhere, instead of where I had e to the R. T, I just replace it by P zero T. Okay, so there is the bond price uh, inside uh, here and here, and also since volatility may not be constant but it may be time dependent, then I also have to replace uh, I have to replace uh, uh, sigma square root of T by by this thing here, which I call the capital sigma F of capital T. It's the square root of uh, integral from 0 to t, sigma squared of f u du. Now, this is something that I told you already, uh, the version of the Black-Scholes formula, if, there is, if the volatility is a function of time, uh, rather than uh, uh, being a fixed constant, that we have to replace sigma squared by its average over time. This is really equivalent to that. So, so that goes back to, to that idea. All right, so we have a formula. I think you will need it for one of the problem sets, problems, one of the problems in the problem set. Uh, you, you should be able to use it uh, uh, if your underlying asset of the call option 
over the numerator bond price, which has the same maturity as the option maturity, has deterministic volatility. You have this Black Scholes Merton formula for pricing call options. How do you prove this? I'm not going to prove it, but it's proved exactly the same, really, using the same tricks that I just did uh, in the previous slide when pricing a, a re standard call option on, on, a, on a stock. Uh, it's the same type of uh, idea. I change numerator. Uh, I use this as the P as the numerator for the second term, actually, and then I use S as the numerator for the first term. And similar tricks uh, uh, would give you this formula. I'm not going to do it. It's in our book if you want to see details. Uh, but I only want you to know that this formula exists and how to use it. Now, how to use it, I'm going to do that in the next slide in an example. What we really want it for, we want it when S is also a bond, uh, we want to price a call option on a bond. I'm saying that this is in the Vasicic model, but actually the same it's really in any affine model. You will see that the argument doesn't really rely on, on having a Vasicic model. It's any affine model that we talked about. Um, so consider a call option with uh, on a T2 bond. So the option is written on a T2 bond. So what I called S in the previous slide, S of T becomes uh, P of uh, T T2. Yeah. I'm going to write a call option on the T2 bond, the bond of maturity with maturity T2. And the option itself is going to mature at time T1, which is less than T2. Well, if I want to use the previous slide, then I have to check whether this ratio, this uh, ratio here, the, the ratio of the two bonds, uh, the one on which I'm writing the option, P of T2, over the numerator bond, the one with the maturity of the option, which is T1, I want to see whether that has deterministic volatility. Now, I know that in affine models, which includes Vasicek, P of T capital T is E to the ATT uh, minus B of T T R of T. Uh, where A and B are deterministic, okay? That's what we did in affine models. And therefore, this I, it's easy to compute this ratio here. Uh, it, the, the ratio is then just the ratio of exponentials, which means everything gets into the exponent of one exponential. Uh, the one in the denominator comes with a minus sign. So I, I'm going to get this. Uh, if I just do the ratio of these two guys, or T2 and T1, I'm going to get this. Now the question is, what is the volatility of this? You could do it as a rule, but we can easily write it down uh, just by a little bit of thinking about it without writing the whole Ito's rule. Well, well, A is deterministic and B is deterministic. So the only way, the only uh, place where the volatility is coming from is from R. Okay? And R has volatility sigma in, in the Vasicic model. So I'm now I'm going to use that it's a Vasicic model. Right? So in the Vasicic model, the volatility is, uh, is sigma. And uh, so actually, I was uh, kind of wrong. It's, it, it's not for any affine model. You have to have uh, deterministic volatility. Um, so for the Vasicic model, the volatility is uh, sigma. And then the volatility of this whole thing is going to be just this multiplied by sigma, right? Because it's multiplied by the volatility of R. Right? So you can do it as a rule, or you can uh, kind of, hopefully, I convinced you, this is what happens. The, uh, the volatility of this ratio, this ratio here, is just this part, which is minus B of T2 minus B of T1 times volatility of R, which is sigma. Okay? But this is deterministic. Okay. This is deterministic. Uh, and therefore, I can use the, the previous formula. Right? So I would just say that the price of the bond option, call, call option on a bond, uh, is given by this formula, where uh, instead of this capital sigma f, I use this, where sigma f, I just 
show you what it is in the uh, next slide. It's b of t2 minus b of t1 with a minus sign times sigma, right? So uh, I use that to compute the, the capital sigma. And other than that, here's a formula. It, it gives you, now capital T is going to be T1, and S of 0 is going to be P of 0 T2, right? So just to write it down, this is going to be P of 0 T2. Uh, that's the option, that's the bond on which we are writing the option, and this guy here is going to be P of 0 T1. Other than that, you have everything else, and you can write the price for the bond option, call bond option, in the Vasicek model. Okay, that's, uh, that's really what we needed it for. Uh, and now we have learned how to price. First of all, how to price bonds if you have a model for the short rate or for forward rates, uh, or maybe for the simple LIBO rate. Uh, actually, for that we we, only, we didn't price bonds. We priced the uh, caplets. Right? We pri priced the option on the on the LIBO rate. Uh, and uh, here we can also price in these affine models of short rate. Uh, well, not all affine models, but uh, like in the Vasicek model, we can price also call option on a bond. All right, that is it for this set of slides.